You're not limited to RCM when grading HDR inside Resolve. You can also use ACES. And ACES stands for Academy Color Encoding System. Let's give that a try. I'm back to a new empty project. So I'll go straight to Project Settings, Color Management, and change Color Science from the default DaVinci UI RGB to one of the ACES options. You can choose ACES CC or ACES CCT. And CCT varies from CC in that it has a toe in the curve. And this is very similar to log C. And both log C and ACCCT are similar to motion picture film. Therefore, some colorists prefer CCT because it has a better response in the shadow area. So I'll go ahead and select CCT. Once you switch over to an ACES option, you can choose the ACES version. In general, the latest version is preferable. You can also choose the Input Device Transform and Output Device Transform. Much like RCM, I'll leave the input set to No Input Transform so I can interpret the clips individually in the Media tab. I will change the Output Transform. I do want one that supports HDR. If I scroll down, there'll be several sets of options. Look for REC 2020. And REC 2020 is the color gamut supported by HDR. For example, I can choose REC 2020 SD2084, 1000 nits. You'll see here that there are common nit limits, 1000, 2000, and 4000. There are also variations that include the P3 D65 limited option. P3 is another color space that's used for digital projectors. Although the color gamut for P3 is fairly wide, it's not as wide as Rec 2020. So it's common for colorists to choose a P3 variant to limit their color gamut to what's common out there in the world in terms of projectors or other devices. So if I choose REC 2020 SD2084 P3 D65 Limited here in ACES, ACES will ensure that the color transform moves the values from REC 2020 to P3 so you're less likely to lose values once your material gets out into the world. Now there are another set of options that are similar. You go higher up in the list, there are a set of P3 D65 SD2084 options with their own knit limits. It seems like it should be the same, but there are subtle variations in the mathematics between this set and the other REC 2020 set. It's common for a platform such as Netflix or Amazon to very clearly state which output color space they prefer. Some will prefer one of these P3 options, while others will prefer one of the REC 2020 options. So for now, I'm going to choose the REC 2020 SD2084 1000 nits P3 D65 Limited. When you choose one of those options, you'll see you have a choice to select a mid-gray luminance level in terms of nits. 15 is very common, so I'm going to leave it set to the default. Then I'll click Save, and then I'm ready to start working in HDR. Now I will mention that P3 is also an option if you are using RCM. In fact, you can choose P3 if you're grading SDR. Let's go ahead and bring in some footage. This time I'll go back and get the Alexa LF shot. Once again, it looks terrible. So similar to RCM, I need to choose an input color space. I'll right mouse button click on the clip, go to ACES input transform, and select Alexa. And now it looks better, much like a log shot. I'll create a timeline. and jump over to the Color tab. And at this point, you can grade HDR much like you would with RCM. For example, you can use the HDR mode, or even apply a 3D LUT to the viewer. So consider ACES when you're setting up a project to grade HDR. We're going to return to the topic of HDR and SDR grading in the next video. If I'd like to take a look at this project in its current state, it's saved out as aces setup.drp.